Hello, everybody, and welcome to Eric's Talk, the new show on my YouTube channel, Easy64, which you probably know if you're already here. Um, so this is my new podcast. Instead of doing it just by myself like I did with Easy Podcasts, um, Eric's Talk is going to be with guests, which are usually my friends, even though... My guest today is... Just kidding. That's like our... our uh, it's going to become a long-running joke between us um, forever. We're not friends. Because when I watched your video today, you were like, we're not friends, and then you cut off. Exactly. No, that kind of broke my heart a little bit. Yeah, I know. It's pretty sad. Um, so, my guest here is Marissa, and you can find her at her YouTube channel as well, Marissa Dujor. And uh, what does that mean, Marissa? It means of the day. And so you're like Marissa said, of the day. Yeah. You need a little dash of Marissa every day. Everyone does, yeah. That's pretty deep. So, originally, Marissa helped me sort of come up with this idea for a show, a little bit, sort of. I'll give you, like, 25% credit. So wow. So, you still don't get any of the money. 27% and I'll be happy. Yeah, this video, in its entire lifespan, might make half a penny, so who knows? Yes. Yeah. So, the initial topic going to be about Marissa... It was going to be about um, what you think home is. Yeah. But then, then you ended I up a doing a video on it. your own about that. Sorry. <laughs> so sad. So people can watch what I think home is on my YouTube channel. <laughs> but Exactly. I'll put a card on screen right now for it so you can just click. And uh, in case you don't care, it's really just all that cheesy college stuff like home is where the heart is, blah, blah, blah. You know. Yay! Wow. Really deep stuff. But actually, but I, it's a really good video. You know, I'm just kidding. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, and I thought since we're both writers, it'd be cool to discuss like how we got into it and yeah, exactly. why you like to write. Yeah. yeah, so that's going to be the topic for this first podcast. So I figured that would be a pretty epic start to this. Our livelihoods and our passions for writing, um, especially creatively, because we're both also journalists. So what a great topic to talk about. So thanks. the topic was your idea. I really like it. Um, and agree with it, but since you brought it up, why don't you go first? What cool. makes Marissa the author, or, or aspiring author, Marissa? Um, wow. Um, well, because I'm interested in, like, how you got into writing, so I'm going to tell you that, like, oh, I, yeah. I remember first starting to write when I was 10, and are you too young for, like, knowing what the babysitter's club books are. Dang. I and think also I you're was, a guy. I didn't write when I was 10, that's for sure. But uh, yeah, keep going. Well, I had, I got a Babysitter's Club journal, Holla, and um, was uh, writing like a story in that. Because I remember like, that's when I found out my grandma had breast cancer and I was like writing a story kind of like revolving around that. And I, I think I was like cancer. trying to... Oh, I mean, that's yeah, not a good thing to have in common, it. but... <laughs> <laughs> no. But um, yeah, I think I was trying to write to like deal with the situation but I didn't know that at the time obviously so that's when I first remember writing and I like mm. I always was like journaling and and because I was always introspective and I still journal and yeah Same. like when did you get into writing yeah so that's really interesting thing first of all is that like in like every different sort of style possible you know yeah um, we're both honor students, so academic papers, we're no stranger to those. Um, so that's probably where my writing passion started. Um, and ironically, I don't do too much of that anymore, except for stuff that I have to do in college, of course. Um, yeah. So there's that, and we both journal, which is just sort of a personal thing that um, mm -hmm. I originally started doing back in 2013 because I thought that would be a good way to just, just sort of, you know, write all the time and you know, practice on your skills, even though you weren't really trying to impress anybody with it because it's just your own writing and <laughs> yeah. only you were reading it. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, and then there's our profession, essentially, what we get paid to do, which is to report on life and to tell stories through facts and all that good stuff. And then your arts and entertainment, so it's sort of more uh, subjective. And... Um, and then, of course, there's the uh, cream of the crop, you know, 
writing our own stories, <laughs> fiction, yeah, the exciting stuff. So yeah, the most yeah. stressful stuff. Yeah, exactly. Combine that all together is pretty stressful. Mm -hmm. But totally. So basically, I don't know about you, because like when I was ten, man, I did have no clue my life at that point in time. So I think my passion and interest in writing really comes from. First of all, like in high school, trying to figure out like what the hell do I want to do with my life, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, the only classes I really super enjoyed all the time were my honors English classes in high school. Cause, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? You, I had the best teachers, um, you know, comparatively to everyone else who I was learning from back then. And um, just so many good stories in classic literature and then like the ability to freely discuss things and why you thought something was, like, well-written or well-told uh, from a, a plot or story perspective. Mm -hmm. Like, that sort of analytical love for characters, like... And whenever you had to do a term paper, it's usually, like, comparing and contrasting different books together and stuff like that. It really makes you sort of appreciate all different types of media thereafter, right? Because, like, books are sort of, the way I look at it, the basic uh, baseline from which everything else in media is grown. I mean, you have music, and then you have, like, TV and movies, and then, like, comic books, video games, like, everything builds upon that, but with more layers of storytelling, you know? But that sort of yeah. movie that you get to direct in your head from a book, like, that's where it starts. So, yeah, I think that's where it started for me. Is that similar to your experience? Yeah, because... I am not good at those two things, and I just, like, English I always came naturally to me. So we'll clean this up in editing, but uh, I didn't okay. hear anything <laughs> you said until, like, after you said, it's because the connection's bad. You said, yeah, because uh, I didn't hear anything. Okay. And you, you froze. I'll, I'll restart. Yeah, so did you. You are like, eh. Like, oh, okay. yeah. So that what did you say, attractive. yeah, because? I said, um... Oh, I don't know about you, but, like, most calm kids aren't good at math and science. And I'm definitely really bad at those, and so English just always came naturally to me. And yeah, it just seemed like I, I grasped, like, symbolism and all that stuff. I didn't have to, it wasn't hard for me to, like, when, did you have to do, like, split journals and stuff? Like, yeah. Well, I, it I was always just so... Like what we learned in English was more applicable to the real world, no matter what you went into. You know, because we all communicate, we all tell stories, like, that's just a part of everybody's life. Um, whereas math and science, yeah, that teaches, like, critical thinking skills and, and certain other skills. It helps go around, but, like, who cares about that? Yeah, I mean, I, was, <laughs> I did well in math and science and all that good stuff. I mean, I did well enough to, like, describe it. I did well enough in, like, my AP chemistry test so I could pass it and get credit for uh, a college course here at Clarion. But when I took the AP English test, I cared about it so much that I got a perfect score because I love English. Yeah. So, yeah, basically, I had a passion for English. I didn't really have a passion for the other subjects, and therefore, you know, I wanted to do better in, in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've always been interested in, like, relationships. Not, like, romantic, like, any relationship. And I think that yeah, has a lot to do with why, right? Yeah, interactions. Especially, like, why I journal. Like, sometimes I share old, like, journal entries that I'm not embarrassed about anymore with friends and stuff. Yeah. And I remember I shared one with my roommate once, and she's like, why are you quoting people? This reads like a, a book. Like, why aren't you just writing down your emotions and, and like, <laughs> your angry or whatever? I'm like, oh, I guess... I didn't like, get any quoting people in my journal, I don't know. Like, trying to make a story out of my life, but not really. Yeah. Can you freeze it without it? The connection's okay. really bad, I think. Uh, it's just funny, because we're so close, and then the guy I was with before, um, was, like, he, he's not... You had a connection? Shoot. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
What the? I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but I'm converting like a monster hour and a half video right now. But I don't think hmm. that doesn't have anything to do with the internet, so I don't think that has anything to do with it. I mean, the recording software never stops recording, no matter what connection is dropped or anything. So I can clean this up in post, and it'll look fine for the most. So part. did you hear anything I said? What? Did you hear anything I said? Um. Rambling. The last thing I heard you say was, uh, your roommate said, um, why do you quote people? It reads like a book. Oh. <laughs> what you're saying yeah, there, we'll just go from there in three, two. What am I saying? Go from there. <laughs> like, when you said your roommate was confused as to why you were quoting people. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think I try to figure, I, I journal a lot to try to figure out, like, my relationships with people, and so yeah. quoting them helps me try to... It's kind of like a math equation, but one I actually understand, so... Yeah, that's really interesting. Sometimes when I journal, like, I don't know, I'm either into it a certain day, or something like a like personal consequence happens, but other days it just comes down to, like, logging your life and what happened in the day. <laughs> so it's sort of... And I was... Sorry, go ahead. What just happened? I said sorry, go ahead, because I interrupted you. Oh, you're <laughs> playing with your fingers or something. I'll keep that in for you. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was in my creative writing class the other day, and we had to talk about why we wrote. And I hadn't thought of it, but this one girl said that she writes to preserve like her mm -hmm. memories and stuff. And I was like, that's such a good... like. That's why I journal, but I never thought of yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. That is basically why I started to journal myself. Yeah, and it does make a lot of sense. Because I go back and read my old journals and stuff, and they're kind of painful to look back on, but <laughs> they're still, like, it's good to see how much I've grown. Mm -hmm. So, So yeah, let's look at the motives, like, behind each of our styles of writing. So, like, we, we <laughs> journal personally to preserve and to sort of reflect, you know, on the day. <laughs> Because I don't know about you, but I haven't really gone back and read like hardly any of my journal entries. I'm saving that for like whatever day I decide to do that. Particularly maybe a rainy day, a sappy day. <laughs> but um, so it's really just sort of a way to reflect at the end of the day um, for me more than anything. Or and like you said, emotions out. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. That sort of writing is a good cathartic release, at least mentally. And then um, you know we. We write papers to get good grades, and we, we are journalists because we, we need money to live and survive, but are there more intrinsic values to you as to why you're a journalist, I'm sure? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. If we didn't get paid at the call, would you still be doing it? Like. Oh, yeah, because that was a part of the interview. Was like I remember they asked me if this wasn't a paid position. Or do you want to be a part of it? And I said, I didn't even know it was paid. Well, there you go. <laughs> it's it's good experience, and I made friends. Not you. Yeah, I'm that's talking right. about, like, Casey, but... Yeah. Um, so, like, why do you, um... Like, why are you a journalist, though? Well, I don't know if I've told you this, but I originally went into clearing as an English major, mm -hmm. but I didn't want to teach. And as much as they were telling me, oh, yeah, you'll find a good career as an English major who doesn't want to teach, I knew that was a lie. So um, my mom was like, well, there's yeah. this major called communication, and there's a writing track for journalism, and you could go into that. And so I kind of went into it blindly and learned to love journalism Yeah. as a freshman and sophomore. And yeah, I've always sort of been like, ever since I first got my uh, reporting job in 2013 as like, a lot of stuff happened uh, in 2013 that sort of like started off my writing in a lot of different areas. But I was a sports reporter for my uh, paper back home, Times Observer, and like sports ne was never anything that like sort of got me because it's really, I guess it's for entertainment. But for me, it wasn't you know anything too exciting. Um, so like ever since then, since I've actually become a news journalist, I don't know. I'm one of those like idealistic, romantic journalists that want to just spread the truth truth and like make sure the the people who want to be informed are informed about you know things going on in their lives that they deserve to know about yeah so do you feel like that um like with arts and entertainment like 
was that like always your desired um, outlet for journalism in that area? No, but I I wrote for Arts and Entertainment the longest because I wrote for A and E and features, and I don't know. I just thought going into the Clarion Call, it was it would be a really good section, a, a fun section to take care of. Yes, yeah, so I mean fun as well. I like writing hard stories too. Mm-hmm. Like the Jesus in India story was fun to write. Yeah. I mean, it was a pain in the ass at the time, but... <laughs> that was super hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, like, you look back on it, and you're proud of it, because you uh, mm -hmm. helped to cover something that was important to you. Something that you yeah, and that's know. the thing. Like, I want my writing to help people, because I feel like... I know writing is my passion, but I'm not serving a purpose on earth unless I'm helping people. So journalism yeah. kind of serves that purpose for me. Yeah, definitely. And I think that sort of extends into, like, you know, our creative writing as well. Like, yeah. I want to write and tell stories with meaning and messages to mm -hmm. relate to the the great universal human struggle that or journey is a more positive way to look at it um to mm -hmm. just sort of add my little bit of input to that you know collection of knowledge and experience that we all share because i think i never really wanted to be like a an author until like a couple years ago i guess because i think it's something that built over time you know you sort of learn to love the stories that you love and then once you become older you mature and learn why you love them like star wars for instance i you know i watched it when i was three years old right but um <laughs> now as an adult i acknowledge the deeper meanings behind every movie and every character in every setting and like just so much more goes into it than what you would think as a child and then you realize that you have the potential to do that and maybe have some unique ideas that nobody else has like it's almost your duty in a way to like share that with people, right? Mm -hmm. So what about? And you? I feel like, oh, um, I write a lot of like realistic fiction, and so my stance is like, if I can make even one person feel understood, like I've done my job. Yeah. I guess you know. Well, that's pretty sweet. Um. So. Same thing with journalism, I guess. Yeah, so why realistic fiction? Because that's, um, because you're a realistic fiction writer, and I'm a fantasy fiction writer, I guess you could say. Um, yeah. Yeah. So what why? makes you um, that? I just, a lot of my ideas come from things that have happened in my life, so I kind of loosely base my story ideas on things that have happened to me, and then kind of throw in some, like, creative yeah. Um, parts. I don't know. I think it's because I like looking at relationships in life that that's kind of the the genre that I yeah I stick to. I can see that, and I think that's a common thread between like what you write and like really good fantasy, sci-fi, what have you, um, out of this world. I guess in a way, fiction, because the best stories I think, um, no matter how outlandish they seem to people on this planet or uh, or how relatable they seem on the surface if they have like deep human themes and, and struggles and journeys and like you said the character relationships that um just relate to the whole human element of things um mm -hmm. i think that what's that's what makes them great what makes them loved by a lot of people because i remember learning in school that the the uh, touchstones of good literature in general is a uh, one is universality the ability to relate to it and to, d to draw something from it and maybe incorporate what you've learned uh, into your own life the second was individuality which was just sort of you know being unique and telling a story for a reason and not to like beat the same message or the same thing that's been done in the past over and over again and then the third one is sort of suggestion a way to make you you think on a story and like just sort of con contemplate like what it's trying to tell you or or just sort of get lost in it and i feel like 
some like bad fantasy stories it's like they focus on the fact that it's like oh look at this fantasy element and they don't build upon like characters you know but from yeah. what i've read of your story that you're working on right now you've got it all <laughs> you know because yeah. i'm like i'm not really big into reading fantasy but i really enjoyed what i read of yours because it had that that character relationship based element yeah and a lot of my favorite sort of things like sort of echo that like avatar and star wars and in Batman and even the Legend of Zelda and other other things to an extent because I think every single medium has the potential to be art because at the end of the day there's a story behind every single thing you consume that is fiction or or otherwise like there's a story to be told and if there is a story to be told uh, regardless in which way you interact with it it sort of uh, has the potential to be art and everything's subjective so people get to decide for themselves what they like and what they think is beautiful, which is really special about it. Yeah. No one can see your face right now, but that was... I can okay. see my face. Well, I mean the people who will be listening to this. They will see my face. Oh. Oh, I thought it was a podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's a video podcast. Oh my god, so I've been probably making really stupid faces this whole time, thinking I wasn't going to be on video. Oops. Oh, yeah, no, Rev- this is Skype. What do you think Skype is? Mid-podcast <laughs> video and audio. I said that at the beginning. I'm sorry. I thought... Oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> I need to watch what my face is doing from now on. Oops. That's that was really totally funny. candid. Hilarious. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, that was like 20 minutes. Is there well, anything to say? Hmm. Um, what about, like, do you have any books that have shaped how you write? Oh, that's a good... That's good. All right, we'll jump back into it on my Yeehaw. snap of my finger, which means when I make the noise, you don't look like this and say nothing. <laughs> oh. Do you want me to ask you first, or do you want you to ask me? Um, you can ask me. Okay. Three, two. So, are there, like, any books or, or um, stories in particular that have, like, sort of shaped the way you write? Well, I'd say, like, the first one that you haven't read would be the Harry Potter books, because even though... <laughs> I read <laughs> The Sorcerer's Stone and half of Chamber of Secrets, and I've seen the that movies, and I plan on reading them this year, maybe. Yeah. Um, like, even though I don't write in fantasy, like, she... The, the craziness that is J.K. Rowling's, like, character list in that book and how intricate and, like, I don't even know. It's just, like, insane how many characters are in those novels and just the relationships are so good. And I think that that kind of inspires me. Yeah. And then, did you ever read any Lemony Snicket books? Uh, no. I saw the movie. Yeah, it was horrible. But, um... He writes under his actual name, like, young adult novels, and his name is Daniel Handler, and there is a book that I read when I was, like, 17 or 18, it's called Why We Broke Up, and, um, he basically tells you that, like, this young couple, they break up, so you know how it's gonna end, but it kind of takes you through the journey of Hmm. why they did, and so I thought that, like, um, writing technique was really interesting, and even even though, like, looking back on the book now, it's not the bed of annoying. Like, it still <laughs> inspired me because it's, like, this cool stream of consciousness writing. And yeah. Well, in that case, it's really about the uh, journey and not the destination. Yeah. Because it just get outright gives you the ending. <laughs> yeah, and I thought that was really cool because it's like, but you still want to read even though you know this couple, you're going to watch them fall in love and you know they're going to, like, screw each other over. But yeah. you still want to read. Yeah. That's really interesting. And like like you said with Harry Potter, you talked about the characters and everything, and that's probably what the core, why we love Harry Potter, is uh, the characters. But like, 
why couldn't it be told in another sort of setting? I think it's because, like, J.K. Rowling's specific magical universe that she had in mind, she utilizes it to augment the, the story and the plot and the characters in her books. Like, mm-hmm. without the, uh, the struggle between good and evil and the magical abilities and stuff like that, it adds, like, an extra level of tension, of romance, of whatever have you. Uh, depending on the chapter, so I think that's why like Harry Potter, for example, is like brilliant in the way it employs fantasy. Yeah, and the fact that like after reading all the books, you can look back and be like, "Wow, I don't know if Dumbledore was as great as I thought," but I won't spoil it for you any more than that. So. Yeah, that's another thing I like doing and am going to incorporate in what I write is um, big relations that actually make you want to like. They change so much, but they're so well crafted that it will make you want to like re read the book, like right after you yeah. finish. Which is something that's very hard to do, and most stories don't even attempt at doing that because it is so risky. There is one movie that I uh, saw once called The Prestige. It's a Chris, it's a Christopher Nolan movie, and um, the ending was so shocking and. Um, and it had such an impact on the film that I immediately rewatched the entire two and a half hour movie right after I watched it for the first time. Because you're a nerd. And that, but that's how much it changed it. It was like a new movie completely <laughs> after uh, yeah. after learning about that. And I think another thing is like um, maybe we could talk about like what some of the uh, most common story archetypes are, like um. For me, it seems like, and you can take this sort of literally or sort of symbolically, depending on the story, but uh, good versus evil is, like, the ultimate story. Like, it's in just about almost everything, and a lot of the stuff mm-hmm. that I find interesting. So what do you think about that? Well, let me comment one more time on Harry Potter, because <laughs> good, good versus evil. Um I thought it was interesting, because I, I never really thought of this until I saw something on, on the internet about it, but, like, Harry is good. There's no arguing that. And I forget who had said that, like, Harry's not really the tragic hero in the series. It's Draco, because he's the one who is, like, mm. he's being swayed by his family and, like, Voldemort to be evil. But I think deep down tensions are like he'd go to the good side if he could but there's too much like family pressure yeah. and it's almost also, like the archetype of an anti-hero who may do bad things but isn't bad inherently yeah yeah plus i love tom felton so yeah i just have a soft side for draco yeah but um what else what was the question again good versus evil yeah, um like even symbolically, like, even in books about just love or relationships, there is almost a story of good and evil there, you know? Because mm-hmm. you can sort of just sort of relate it to, like, you know, if people in that relationship don't do things that um, are expected of them or are typically good, and, and that's another story in and of itself, like, what is good and what is evil. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, like sort of that struggle between going forward and positivity versus negativity and going back. I don't know. Messes with your mind. Yeah. And also, because my roommate's watching Breaking Bad, that's one that it's like, I really love and hate that, like, all of the characters are so gray. Yeah, and exactly. that you can't pick a side because... Uh, spoiler alert season where Skylar and uh, Walt are like getting separated and I'm like who's I said whose side would you be on even though you, it's hard to choose because they've both done like bad things but you can understand why like yeah how do you pick a side and why do we want to pick a side like why do we need to be like no I'm with Walt or I'm with Skylar like yeah, I think that's, that's one of the reasons, if not the biggest reason why I love Breaking Bad so much, is because it makes you think about that sort of thing so much. Like, they're 
I don't know. There really aren't any heroes and villains in that show. I mean, not not yeah. in the way that you typically think of them, which is sort of a good commentary on like what makes a hero, what makes a villain, what makes you good, or what makes you bad, um, mm-hmm. and sort of just like test those boundaries because it's almost like the uh, what the road to hell is paved with good intentions or whatever. That's like pretty yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah. Just and I love the writing technique of like changing the protagonist into the antagonist. Like that's a very strong. Like you have to have strong writing for that, and obviously oh, yeah. they pull it off. But that would be something that I'd like if I could pull that off in my writing. I'd pat myself on the back. Yeah, that's something I haven't really thought of too much myself. And then like the other way too, which I feel like is done even less so. Turn antagonist into a protagonist. I don't even know if I can think of any examples oh, of yeah. top of my head, no. to be honest. I mean, I I know there are some villains that are sort of gray and, like, sort of do good things sometimes, but, like, all the way, I can't really think of too much. Yeah. That's interesting. Well, I'm getting ideas now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, totally. And, like, uh, I think that's why I'm drawn to uh, things like... Um, Star Wars and the Legend of Zelda and stuff, because at the end of the day, you know, all the things that happen on the journey towards the final destination, like, it's just a, it's a battle, like, literally, between good and evil at the end, which is really exciting to read, or watch, or play, or whatever. And even if it's, like, a, uh, because I know there are different types of conflict in stories, and sometimes the conflict is inner conflict with oneself, and you could even say that uh, good versus evil is um, a tactic in that, that sort of story as well. Yeah. It's like... Like Draco. I don't know. Yeah. And exactly. When you layer stories on top of other stories to do subplots and character arcs, like, that's when stuff gets really interesting and your mind's all over the place. And that really helps you escape into whatever you're digesting. Mm-hmm to escape what do you say yeah I would say pretty much I think the uh, main reason why we even get into these things um, whether we're uh, consuming the stories or creating them which I think more people should create their own things and be sovereign on their own material whatever's in their head if they they want to create a story. Because I feel like it's really a good experience that everyone should have at one point or another. Yeah. But yeah, whether we're creating or absorbing it, I think, yeah, escapism is sort of like that thing that we want to do. Because, like, we know our lives. <clears throat> and we're interested Eric in our lives. Eric hit puberty. What's that? I said Eric hit puberty. Yeah. Mark it. This I don't have is a the day. Voice. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, what was I saying? You remind oh, me of sorry. That. Um, what, why am I totally blanking? I don't know. It's your fault. Oh my gosh. Okay, yeah. So that's what I was saying. Um, that <laughs> we find our lives interesting, but we're in those lives way more often than we are in other people's lives. Whether we want to uh, find a story that's like similar to our own, um, in on every level, or sort of similar. Where, um, on that emotional level where we can escape into a galaxy far, far away or somewhere very deep in the past or in the future or something like that. Like, that's what we do, and we want to escape. So that's probably the prime reason we do these things. What do you think? And I would say that too, but again, let me just talk about my creative writing class like for the fifth time. Um, we someone said that they write to escape and that it's it's like a fun thing for them to do and our professor was like but sometimes you need to confront things like obviously you you probably wouldn't confront like your personal issues in fantasy writing but like maybe like, like obviously your journal oh, I right now in my first project oh, well then there you go so like a couple like, of my characters are me straight up like just extensions of something I wish I was or maybe a negative outlook yeah. of who I am, or a positive outlook of who I am. Totally do that. And like you said earlier, yeah. like you put a lot of yourself into your writing, and I think 
to a certain degree, every author does that, maybe more or less depending on their style or what they're writing. But yeah, totally. So, like, you're having fun with it, but you're also kind of not harsh, as harsh as, like... Just uh, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. It's almost you're, like you're just, like confronting yourself in a healthy way, in a way that's not like super painful. Oh yeah, I think um, it's almost escaping and confronting the real world, and it those two tracks are moving into a collision. And if you're doing your story right, that's going to build and build as the story rises and rises, and then hits that climax, and that that's sort of the nexus where all of your lives come together. It's like a spiritual journey writing. If you're really writing to like have a meaningful impact on either yourself or other people. Yeah, totally. Like it's Stephanie like, Meyer. <laughs> yeah. I actually was going to mention Twilight uh, at one point. I think we were talking about <laughs> I said that well, that beautiful statement about writing and you're like, <laughs> Stephanie Meyer, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, but like you said, you like read for characters and relationships, and um, I don't think Stephanie Meyer's vampire werewolf world is inherently bad, right? But her characters are poorly written, and her dialogue is poorly written, and then that was like compounded in the movies, right? So they were even worse. So like the sad thing is, you don't sorry, have a, go ahead. Like cast, you don't have anything to build off of for a fantasy story. Yeah, and the sad thing was I really enjoyed reading those books until the last one, and when I realized that, like, no one died, like, someone had to die and no one died, then I got angry. I'm like, wow, I just read all four of these books for no reason. Yeah, but why do you want somebody to die? Because those books are just about romance between two characters. Three, I guess. You want because to through the whole series, it was like someone's gonna die. It was so foreboding. No one dies. Everyone gets saved in a battle. In a battle, someone has to die. Yeah, but so you weren't enjoying the books for themselves. You were just looking forward to somebody dying, an event. Then that means that book failed completely. <laughs> if you're not enjoying like what you're reading in the moment, oh, and that's well, the romance was crap too. So. Jesus. I mean, I had to look for something, some bright light. And Fifty Shades of Grey was fan fiction on top of that, and then turned into another crappier movie on top of that. Yes. Did you read Fifty Shades of Grey? No, but then that translated God. into my journalism world, and I reviewed the crap out of it and destroyed it for a college newspaper. Yes. We'll Good put that you. in the description below. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Good times. I felt like I was going to say something else. But you have stuff going up on up in here? Sometimes. Did you know that I am smart sometimes? Like 10% of the time? 20 maybe? Mm. Oh, what I was oh. going to say was when we were talking about, like, writing about ourselves. Remember when I told you about that novel I wrote when I was 17 and it's horrible? But yes. it was basically, like me writing about my junior year of high school, which was probably the worst year of high school for me personally and like socially and stuff and Same academically. Here. At least the first And time. so it was like it was like me revisiting that year and if I could have done it the way I wanted to and if I was like a badass protagonist, that's how I wrote that book. I mean it was still a shitty book, but it was like me kind of going back and being like, This is how it should have gone. So you fantasized so about what it could have been. Mm-hmm. And that's sad. Uh-oh. Yeah. But, uh, basically... Do you have anything else to say? I have one last question for you, because I'm running this show. If you okay. could live anywhere in the world and, and write, where would you pick? Probably Japan. And, like, what... Would you like live in a, a far like would you want to live in a city or like in a little cabin where no one can Well see that's why the answer is Japan because then I can do both. I can sort of go out and retreat okay. in the beautiful temples and under the archways and in the forest and stuff like that, but then I can go to Tokyo yeah. and party. <laughs> uh 
because we know you do that. I think that's why I'm attracted to Seattle as well. It's like a beautiful city, but nestled right in the heart of like beautiful Northwestern America. I don't know. What would be your place then? It would be... I don't know if I would want to say Edinburgh, but somewhere in Scotland. Like, I don't know if I would want to be in the Highlands, because then I'm like a hobbit. But Because like J.K. Rowling wrote there, and it's like my favorite city in the world. And it's just so inspiring. Like, so many writers started there. There you go. Like, ah. It's great. Not that I like it. Well, I think that will be it for this episode. Thanks yeah. for having me. We talked for like 35 minutes or so, something like that. Not bad. Yeah. And good job. Again, you can check out Marissa at her channel. And then you can check me out here on mine. You're already here. So no one wants pretty. to check you out. Wow. Pierce my heart, I tell you. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you very much for coming on, Marissa. Thank you. All right, and um, continue uh, looking forward to more episodes of Eric's Talk every Saturday um, this spring and hopefully in the future as well. All right, thank you guys for watching. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Nice. We did it.